我改一个啊 PPT， 改一个啊，我 PPT 咩？四，嗯。Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our HKIBIM sharing session. My name is Kevin Wang, head of training, and today uh, we have. Uh, Guan Ting, Vice uh, Chairman of HKIBIM, together with us. So today our topic is practical adoption of BIM in infrastructure mega project design. We'll invite uh, Wen Dite from Atkins uh, to have a sharing session about this topic. Before that, uh, we will invite Guan Ting. Vice Chairman to share some of the new latest news of HKIBIM. Our uh, share section will be conducted in English. One thing, please. Uh, hello, uh, all members uh, and non-members. Uh, welcome to HKIBIM uh, technical webinar. Uh, so uh, I'll do a quick introduction of the um, uh, HKIBIMs, and then I'll pass the uh, pass it over to uh, to Wendy. So uh, for HKIBIM, uh, we, today we have more than uh, fourteen hundreds of uh, members right now. So really, the, the objective of the institutes uh, is to promote and advance the general educations uh, and understanding of BIM, foster general awareness of BIM, uh, establish and advance standards of BIMs, uh, establish links you know with tertiary tertiary educations, government bureaus, departments and uh, statutory bodies and other organizations, including providing research and providing guidance uh, on careers regarding BIM management professions. So, yeah, we got it. So uh, for this uh, for this year, HKIBN uh, CBDs, today's, uh, for this term, we have uh, held uh, 12 sessions ready, a uh, technical webinar by uh, uh, Kelvin's teams uh, for technical com by the, by the technical community, and then uh, for being awards, this is uh, this is held uh, earlier this year. Uh, Beam Automation Arena. We are looking forward uh, for for next year, which is going which is uh, in in planning, and it will be held uh, early twenty twenty five. Okay. Uh, recent updates. So uh, uh, just to uh, just to share with uh, all, uh, everyone. So uh, the institute has actually met up with uh, development bureaus to exchange ideas uh, towards the government policies uh, from from BIM's point of view. So uh, on uh, mandate of BIMs, uh, BIM market resources, open BIM and statutory submissions, and including uh, uh, software and technologies. Uh, and then uh, on uh, 30th, uh, and then uh, for CI, uh, CE policy, uh, addressing consultations, uh, uh, chairman and vice chairman have so has also participated uh, with the CE policy address uh, consultations. So uh, coming soon, uh, coming soon. This is uh, this this is already completed. There will be a a, a conference uh, jointly organized and, and uh, by uh, China Graphic Society, uh, HKBIM, uh, GBIUA, and, and also uh, Hong Kong Albania. So uh, I, I definitely strongly urge uh, the public, uh, all members and non-members, uh, to participate in these events. So we should be, uh, we have already issued two rounds of uh, invitations uh, uh, to all our uh, members uh, on the database. So uh, please try to register early and look up uh, for this event, uh, which will be held in Ocean Park uh, Marriott. Uh, we have already completed the local competitions, including the video competitions. The upcoming one is the uh, HKIBIM 15 years publication, which is uh, also uh, under preparation by our uh, events and marketing community. So uh, corporate members, uh, today uh, we have uh, 11 corporate members right now. So uh, I also urge uh, members and non-members to uh, promote uh, to your companies uh, to participate and enroll in, in corporate memberships of uh, HKIBIM. App stores, uh, uh, this is already rolled out. Uh, so we have started sharing uh, BIM automation tools uh, and some of these API dynamos, uh, dynamo scripts. Uh, for 
for last month, April, end of April, we have also held uh, by uh, by the technical committee, by uh, we have also invited uh, the individual winners uh, of last year, uh, Automation Arena, uh, NDG, to actually uh, share uh, his, uh, his, uh, his winning submissions uh, to more than, uh, I think there was around 35 uh, enrollments uh, for for his uh, sessions, uh, that was that was jointly organized by uh, HKIBIM and also by IBE. Okay, uh, our publicity channels. Please stay tuned. Uh, uh, our usual website. Uh, I want you to know this now. Uh, other than YouTube and uh, social media like Instagrams, Facebooks, right? Uh, we have also set up a WeChat account, uh, official WeChat accounts. Uh, uh, earlier, uh, sorry, in July 20, uh, 2023. So uh, please scan the QR code and start um, uh, following us. OK, I think that's all from uh, our side. So uh, I'll hand over to uh, I'll hand the mic over to, to Kevin and Wendy. Thank you very much, Guan. So now um, we will hand over uh, this the section to uh, Wendy to start her presentation. Uh, Wendy, uh, please. OK, thank you. Let me share my screen. Can you all see it? Okay. Yes, we can. Hello, everyone. Um, good afternoon. Um, today, um, I would like to present the practical adaptations of BIM and infrastructures mega projects design in Hong Kong. Um, to start with this, um, I would like to explain a little bit of uh, my background. Um, and my background is like a, a charter engineer in three countries, uh, United States, Australia, and Hong Kong. Um, I would like to share the applications, why we use BIM in our design. So why BIM? So um, this is a process of generating and managing building data during the design, constructions, and life cycle. Uh, back down to when it's completed, down to maintenance for the access lifecycle management. So the common uses for collaborations and coordinations. We can also do the uh, class detections and conflict resolutions. And BIM itself can have a good visualizations and communications during a lifecycle analysis. BIM is a methodology that allows engineers to create digital design simulations and to manage all information associated with projects. It could include a good visualization of the real product and the material, how we incorporate into the model before it, it's built or is during the constructions is being built. I cannot. I cannot. So like, I would like to share like um, the conventional method, how we do the design before BIM and then how uh, it affects our industry when we use BIM. When we use the conventional methods, usually engineers use AutoCAD, microstations um, to draw, it's like a, a paper, paper wall. And then like we do the 2D and then use our brain to think about how this 3D works. So. The conventional method, we usually start with X, Y mode. So it's only on paper, on 2D, and then think about how the terrain and how the existing constraint could affect our design. Um, but then like in BIM environment, it could be more dynamic in 3D environments, and then it have a greater impact from nearby contacts because we can have a visualization of how the terrain, how the existing environment impact to our design. It's a linear in nature spread across larger geographical area. But what is the problems come with it? Well, when we have a lot of data to manage, usually we don't, um, many people don't know how to use the knowledge um, in the correct way. And then what is the benefit of it? 
because when we have a 3D environment, what's going on to use it and how to benefit it? A lot of time we have a poor interoperability and efficient functionality. So how are we going to address that? So that's why we need to use BIM instead of a conventional method. How are we going to move forward and then add value to the whole design process, as well as um, uh, life cycle with constructions, with access management, management, um, and the maintenance team. Um, so the next sections, I will talk about the beam in the world work design that we um, we have it, and then how does it impact our uh, mindset and design methodology? Um, first of all, um, I would like to show you how we use a conventional way to do the design. As mentioned, we use the horizontal alignment, put it on a piece of paper, um, look at the existing base map, put the XY value to create a horizontal alignment, and then just put the vertical alignment afterward. And then that's some iterations in between because uh, horizontal may affect the vertical or uh, vice versa. So separate drawings for a different area <coughs> will have uh, interactive iterations in between. Versus in BIM, we could dynamically control and design the vertical, horizontal, um, X, Y, E, Z environment. So basically, it could create a comprehensive integrative model with respect to the existing terrain. Um, the iterations of the design element um, could be could be faster, could be easier. But if, of course, if with respect to its setting, how we are going to use it in the correct way. BIM enable creations of 3D um, digital model, which integrated all discipline and elements. Because <clears throat> when we work on the um, alignment design, we could add a lot more um, existing constraint in it with respect to the impact and how 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 to expedite the design, how to um, visualize um, the construction constraint, etc. In the design stage, with respect to BIM, we can see it a lot earlier. Um, if you look at um, the right hand side, this is the uh, very quick way to build um, the uh, road um, in InfoWorks model with 3D BIM object. Um, basically, we can download the existing base map from uh, Hong Kong HKMS uh, 2.0. It's a 3D special data from government in the left hand side. And then we can quickly build the bridge, roads, tunnel, whatever um, um, civil elements into the model. The benefit is that we could quickly visualize how um, the bridge and road um, integrate into the existing area. And then um, it's very um, quick, uh, time saving, high efficiency and effectively. Um, it's not to build a 2D, but like we build it 3D immediately to the constraint. Um, the benefit is like um, very good for um, a quick idea how to build the models, how to work on it, and how to have a good impact, um, visualizations impact uh, to the existing environment. So in a conventional way, in the left-hand side, it will be just a black and white. Um, probably we can create a color in powerful, nice uh, image. Versus in the right-hand side, we have we can see uh, what is the constraint, what's going on with the geometries. Um, the sketching is essential for all engineer, especially for highway designer. We can express our preliminary idea. Um, broad brush of the design, brainstorming stage is very good because we can quickly draw it to see uh, what's going on and then uh, what is the existing impact to the design. So as ensure enough creativity for our designer, 
Why? Because we got a lot of uh, hands on information. It will be a good design, should have many preliminary thoughts, and then we can explore more uh, um, options with the uh, visualizations. So it can narrow down quickly to a final design. Beam modeling can help uh, brainstorming stage, especially proposal and visualizations. This is a perfect tool for us. And then when we're down to detailed design, um, we can focus as aesthetic facing and then um, to a technical aspect. Um, whatever the considerations like the geometry requirement, junctions design and traffic design, we could just quickly put it in and then with like um, a very detailed and um, <clears throat> in a correct manner. But then what is the challenge of highway design? the highway geometries requirement to meet junction design. And then we also need to take into account of traffic and some design change are not simply to adopt. For example, like that's change in the road sections, change in tying sections, we, which we need to take into account um, to tie into the existing. So like this, we will need to work with the existing uh, terrain. I'm glad that we can download from HKMS, so like we could quickly um, visualize the impact and know what's going on, how to uh, mitigate the junction design. And then um, <clears throat> after we um, create the BIM model, as is like contain all the design informations. So like the value added is like, even we put um, a heavy vehicle on the on the road, on the bridge, and then like we can quickly understand the surface analysis, and then we can check if the design is with respect to the local uh, guidance um, or guidelines, and then we also can check the sideline analysis um, and the collaborations with respect to other design elements like. Um, utilities like uh, street furniture, like integrating or or even landscape area that we can have look to it. So basically, the model itself is not just a model; it's contain all the design elements, which is it, which could be presented on drawings. But then, like those also are applicable uh, is in compliance with the local guidelines as well as <clears throat> the um. I presented in the drawings to submit it. This is like um, <clears throat> um, dynamic view, like we can see how the trucks run through it, and then what is the design elements. What is the elevation, super elevation sight line that I just talked about it? This is a perfect tour for like uh, what works alignment. Okay. So with like a nice uh, video and <laughs> Um, the graphics, there's some limitations and issues when we work on the design. Um, as we, our uh, formal submission usually are drawings, so we have, but many times we have to put it in on AutoCAD or in other format like micro stations, and then uh, put it into the, um, present it on drawings, and then print the PDF out and submit it as a deliverable. A lot of time, there's a lost dynamic link to the alignment and the design data. So even as <clears throat> also AutoCAD product, we AutoDesk product, we still have some limitations at that some dy dynamic uh, link lost to it. So we have to manually adjust the information. So um, as an engineer, we are not just uh, presented, use the computer, but then we also have to validating the design information presented on drawings. And then <clears throat> as we live in Hong Kong, uh, there's 
no uh, local design criteria file for us to use it. Um, for example, if you use the um, Civil 3D, uh, when we load down the alignment um, boxes, there are a lot of ASHTO, uh, which is the uh, alignment design requirement for United States. Um, it has already set it out. Um, the tools are very easy, user friendly and very easy to use it wherever it's like the, the simple elevations use like 6%, 8%, 10%. We just click the link, we can easily use it. But then like for us, for the TBDM, we couldn't, we have to manually adjust. So basically it's locked off design criteria file for our local use. And then we also limited interpolations between the software leading to, uh, to a lot of reward. Um, it's lack of uh, continuity from file use from preliminary design to detailed design. So basically, um, even we have been working, uh, we have been working on the design with BIM for a few years. We will still need to have a lot of manual adjustment um, to suit the um, BIM model or to suit the um, final product. I mean, like to how to present um, better in with AutoCAD and microstations. So next topic, I would like to um, share my design experience about BIM in airfield design. Um, this is um, Hong Kong only has one airport so far. Um, primarily is the Hong Kong International Airport. Um, so basically um, this, oh, for a lot of people, airport design is like what? It's like a pancake. It's as flat as a pancake, but in reality, it's not. There's a lot of design elements contained in it. So um, this will be the next topic. We would like to go for it and talk about it. So airfield design, what is the conventional way versus in a new way? <clears throat> conventional way will be in your left hand side you can see a lot of brick lines um basically um as i said it's like um as flat as the pancake but it's not in reality and then we have to comply with the faa or like ako aerial drum licensing a lot of requirement so what we have to do is like to manually uh, um, understand the design requirement and draw the Break line and 2D hand calculations to in order to achieve and complete the design. So it's similar to the site development, but not exactly. But then like it will contain a lot of uh, back and forth calculations um, and manual adjustment in conventional design. Versus in BIM, we can quickly put down um, the 3D alignments and then like adjust the um, level, adjust it in 3D dynamically. So the model project takes more time to set up to start with, but then it could be quickly adjust the level um, with respect to um, the design requirement and what we want to achieve. However, in a conventional way, it will take a lot more time with the design development. The reason is that um, it's not dynamic. So we have to use 2D to draw it and then think about it in 3D and minimize cut and feel, et cetera. Versus BIM, we could do it very quickly because we can use 3D well to start with and then handle it all at once. Mm. So, um, the next slide I would like to talk about uh, the third one-way system. Um, basically, the um, Hong Kong International Airport is expected to reach its capacity in 2022. So um, early, like um, almost a decade before, possibly, they are like a uh, third one-way system layout. Um, the key figures, um, elements, is like we have to um, 650 hacks of reclaimed land, and then um, new 3.8 kilometers north one way, um, Terminal 2 building concourse with the um, APM system and BHS system. The construction cost is uh, um, $141.5 <clears throat> billion. And then it is expected to complete by the end of this year. 
So um, basically, we Atkins um, take part of um, um, three RS project, and then uh, there are several projects we have been working on. <clears throat> um, the complexity and diversity of underground utilities, um, theory building and facility necessary involve of multiple consultancy and discipline. All those design elements complete of wide range of um, design elements such as water, wastewater system, electrical, telecommunications, um, transportation tunnel, as well as various civil structures design. Each component requires specific knowledge and expertise, often provided by different consultants and specialists in their respective field. Through the importance of BIM technology is further highlighted. The practical adaptations of BIM in those mega projects serve as a unique force, enabling seamless collaborations and coordinations among those the diverse consultancy. What I mean is, um, we Atkins have some projects to work on, like we have some civil elements like utilities, um, underground utilities, and then like subsurface, like um, diversions of modifications work. Um, and then on top of it, we have airfield design. We have um, a lot of uh, field equipment for the apron for the airfield, as well as land side, air side road construction to support it. And meanwhile, we have to coordinate with other consultants. So how are we going to make it more effectively and efficiently? First of all, we'd like to talk about how we are going to work on the design, um, airfield design considerations. So largely based on a KO aerodrome design manual and standard. It um, involved the airfield geometry, longitudinal slope, transfer slope, but then because it's a reclaimed land, it also related to settlement impact and other jet blast analysis and other some uh, um, uh, airport design planning. Um, so all these considerations will make it looks like a pancake, but it's not because there's some design elements involved in it. We also need to put some kind of um, um, 3D BIM in this such that we can coordinate with others. So how are we, how does BIM add values to our uh, airfield design? So let's have a look of the pavement. If your pavement itself, hmm, it looks like a road, right? But in reality, it's not. It's like uh, um, hamburgers, but then like they have a different thickness and different layers of hamburger related to it. Um, basically, um, they're like some wearing cost base cost, whatever, with different thickness that we have to deal with it. However, if we have a look of every part of the airfield design, it varies because of whatever reason. So how we are going to build it correctly and then uh, estimate the quantity in the correct way. Um, BIM actually allow us to do so. And when we use the um, civil 3D corridor model, we can um, digitize the linear infrastructure element it allow engineers to design and analyze different components within the corridor models. So what is the benefit to use it instead of like the 2D? First of all, when we build, when we set it up and build a model correctly, we quickly can see the quantity and the XYZ, <clears throat> XYZ design, which um, immediately showed it in the model. So it's quickly let the engineer design designer understand how does it impact to the existing terrain. <clears throat> the intelligent objects and alignment and profiles is integrated into the model. So what is the quantity and analysis is quickly coming through after we put it in the BIM. And the information is very quick <clears throat> to be presented in front of engineer. So they could have a quick understanding how does it impact to the existing terrain and the existing site constraint. 
So what is the value added? Oh, so quickly, uh, uh, as I mentioned, it could have a better coordination. How so? Because we can immediately share the BIM models with others. For example, we present it to the clients, um, share with another consultant for coordinations, and then we quickly can understand the of what quantity, and then we understand how much um, uh, material we could use for um, the aerial design. And basically, we quickly can see it, what is the impact uh, minimize cut and fill, what is the grading impact to it, and then we can quickly understand how it visual, visualize, um, um, com, uh, combine it with the existing terrain. Um, it, the, when you see the um, um, presentations, it show it with different colors. Uh, basically, this is show like how thick of the airfield pavement on top of the existing terrain. So it's quickly understanding the quantity and it's just coming through very quickly. So um, what is the value added when I mentioned it in summary? Um, with respect to the conventional design, the BIM model, we can quickly understand um, the design to the existing constraint and how it goes. Um, basically, it can control the design information into a visualized 3D modeling impact. Um, for the convention method, um, we usually have the alignment and then we put it in profiles and then we create the cross sections. We put everything into um, onto the paper, um, put it in CAD, print it out, make a submissions, and we cannot tell how much and how does it look like. Versus in BIM, we put all the design information into a 3D modeling, and we can quickly understand how the design works and contain all the design elements. And it also gives you a quick visualizations. How does it look like in reality? So the pavement design layout, we could use the corridor model with respect to the uh, pavement design. We present it in the surface, but it's in 3D. Means every point, every element that we build it in the model, we could tell um, what is the level, we can measure it, we can understand how it goes. And then we also can make use of the <clears throat> model and then we got the special requirement understand how it has impact to the utility design and then what is the inter interfacing with other design elements and interactive elements what is the um gap physical gap uh, or like constraint we can immediately can see it from the model so basically it can reduce double handling time it's interconnected with one element to another of course this is a very nice value added because it just connected all parties into one platform that's why we call it like cde but we can talk a little bit more later because this setting it can um, facilitate us to put all the design elements into one uh, good share platform But then like we also have a lot of limitations. So um, it's, it, as, as mentioned, like this adaptation is very good for us, put everybody in one design platform, but then what is the limitations to it? Um, so let's talk about the cross sections. Like if you have a look of the left hand side, we have the conventional uh, widget or flexible pavement is a very common, like we have base cost, we have sub base, and then we also have a few cross sections to it. But then um, for civil 3D in for airport design, like is civil 3D itself is primarily for the road, for the infrastructure, for the bridge, for the tunnel. It's more um, linear. However, for airfield design, you can see the pancake itself has a lot of grass area. We have um, different type of um, uh, fillet design. We have different type of um, uh, grass. So like the a typical geometry considerations, it just make our design very complicated by using civil 3D. The reason is 
those designs are not linear pavement and ferries. And then like there's a lot of gap in surface that we have to clean it up. What it means is um, the several 3D is, very, is particular designed for road, but like for airport design, we still need to have a lot of manual adjustment. For example, the manual adjustment like we have to um, specifically build some uh, uh, special elements like the, the corridor or like some um, special need for that um, turning for the uh, rapid exit or like uh, for the for, for the um, connect to the existing uh, taxi lane, taxiway, et cetera. So basically, um, it has a lot of room to improve for uh, to avoid the double handling. But it still works. It works well. Um, it has a very good visualizations, and we can quickly uh, pick up the quantity. But then uh, the software will still have some room to improve in order to um, avoid the double handling works. So next topic, I would like to talk about uh, BIM and underground utility design. Um, the reason I would like to break this out is for the airport projects, we have over 30 different types of underground utilities. Of course, like where we see the pancake doesn't look like that many different type of utilities, but uh, airport itself has a lot of different type of utilities. So um, the utility management is uh, relatively complex. Um, as a little bit uh, mentioned before, um, the BIM modeling um, underground utility design, um, we have a different flow chart. We uh, actually use the BIM 360. Um, it's the um, common data environment. So um, what's the benefit by using free BIM 360 is that we, when we finish the design, we put it on, um, uh, upload it to BIM 360. So it allow other, um, uh, parties like design consultant or like um, um, clients or our contractors, whoever are interested in our design um, for interface use, they can we can use all BIM 360 to exchange information and then to have a good collaborations platform to discuss and make comments to it. As represent uh, the pipeline and pressure network, we can we can uh, put the design elements. Um, and then we also can use uh, BIM 360 to conduct the clash analysis by using Navis work. Um, the utility itself, it, 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 as mentioned, like we have more than 30 type of uh, utilities, as including uh, primarily like drainage, power, communication system, telecommunication system, aviation view, gas. But then like um, after we complete the design, we basically pass the model to the contractor. So we use, we build the model, but then like the model is only up to a design level. We call LOD. 300 or 350 or both, but then like uh, when contractor purchase the material and then to um, uh, buy the product, so they will further um, upgrade the model. So we will talk about that a little bit more. But then like for our C, by using CDE, um, we will make sure the clash analysis are clash free before we pass it to the next party. So we want the clash, we, we understand what's going on. So um, basically we check um, our design in three dimensional as with respect to the special requirement and then um, make sure that our design are correctly state and then we put it in model and share with others. So this is the um, um, utility arrangement that we like to like in the apron that like one corner we is is relatively complex. As mentioned, we have over thirty different type of utility, including permanent and temporary utility, and like some facility that we put everything into one common platform means like in that one common platform it's just like we put ourselves in a virtual world to understand how things to be built and how things to be um uh, presented in the future well like all the proposed work it could build it um in a 
different way. Means uh, for the designer, we build it in LOD 300 or above. Means like uh, we have a concrete shape, just like for example, it's like a rectangle. But in real reality, it could be uh, after the contractor purchase, it could be in a, a, a more um, uh, upgraded way. When they purchase, maybe there's some clashes. They have some form where they will need to um, address it during the construction sequence. So like the shape or like the dimension may be upgraded, may need to change it. So this we will need to um, address and work with contractor during the design stage. However, to start with, like we still in design state, we still have a good understanding how the platform and how those 3D modeling um, put into the design. Value added. Um, a lot of people ask like, is BIM just about clash analysis? Is it just about spectral requirement? Um, the answer is certainly no. It's not just about spectral requirement. It's not just 3D. It's not just about clash detections. Uh, we can use BIM for visualizations. And then when we add the data shortcut, it contained other design information in it, such that we can understand um, to resolve the clash and interface with others. For example, uh, if we put our design there, we can see some clashes with um, the hydraulics element like uh, water, uh, portable water, for example. But when we click on it, we can see it's by pressure. So it, which means it could be moved because it's by pressure. But then like for some gravity pipe, like drainage, we cannot change it. Or like we can quickly have a look if the design could be moved or like could not be moved. So BIM model itself could offer this kind of information. So um, it can report and document it into clashes, we can print that clash um, into a report format to uh, understand how to uh, resolve it, how to um, um, work on it. But then is it everybody understand this uh, resolutions and platform? Um, the next thing we would like to understand the clash validations. Is it a real clash or just a false clash? Because when we build the model, it could be false. It could be some weird line that we forgot to clean up. So um, as an engineer, we, we will need to build the model correctly and then how to improve and work with others um, such that we are using the same platform and put it in a correct way. This is another value added um, for BIM is the access management. Access management, um, after we finish the design, um, after the contractor build it, for each element like drainage manhole or like um, draw pit or like any pipe, we put a name to it. What is the benefit? The name is contain different elements, like where is it? Uh, what is the material? how long that is, like all kind of information could put it in the BIM model. The benefit is like it could have like um, data, um, data analysis. Access management itself is to manage the information and the operations like the build access through its life cycle. When we have all information put it in the model, extracted in a big Excel table or a spreadsheet, we could let the maintenance party to manage. We understand like in a conventional way, we have the uh, on paper. So like for example, uh, one particular area when we want to count how many draw pit and manholes, well, basically we need to get the drawings out or like count it manually on paper. But then when we have access management, we can enter all the information and extract those informations from it. So it can help with creating, collaborating and exchange share model with others. And then it can used by the daily operations, repair of the access. For example, if we have those informations, we can say like 
when it was built. Maybe like in five years, in 10 years, we'll need to do inspections or like uh, any uh, maintenance need to check it uh, with access management. It could quickly get all those informations on hand. So basically our infrastructure's element is given by a specific code uh, facilitate um, the uh, management uh, maintenance party. It could be managed very quickly and more dynamically. So um, access code could be a standardized system. It could um, quickly let you understand and do a quick research and then it's scalable. Like everything is could be um, Pack in and then like enter it and then you can do a quick search. So it, it is a very good way for a maintenance party to manage the access. Rule checking and to the uh, product. Um, that's one is like uh, the pipe property. We can put a lot of slope. We can quickly understand what's going on. It's Automated and continuous rule. What I mean is that, like this, we can quickly check and then we can change of all directions and then to see how it goes in 3D world. And then what is the impact to others? So, um, the engineer designed the in, in the old methods. We just like change a pipe, understand what's going on, and then change it without looking, uh, taking care of the other design in the facility area. But then with BIM, we can use data shortcut to reference all the information in it, and then we quickly can see if the revised design suit or it works or not working. However, however, <laughs> there's other limitations um, with this dynamic changes. Um, as mentioned, like in 3D world, when we change, say, for example, the inlet and outlet uh, invert level, um, we change it in BIM model, and then we can present it and change it in other drawings, like the table, wherever, immediately, and reflect it. So we basically print the table out, we revise the drawing, and that's all. Very nice, very interactive. However, in drawing site, uh, during the constructions, uh, in the conventional way. For example, in the right hand side, if we want to change the pipe size uh, from uh, maybe from 500 millimeters to 100, uh, one meters, okay, for example. Um, in the conventional way, we just need to open AutoCAD microstation um, and then just change the numbers and quickly uh, print the PDF out and then we can uh, submit it. It's very simple with a dance sketch, with this, whatever. But then in BIM workflow, it's a lot more complicated than this. We will need to change it in 3D environment. We have to open the 2D world and then open it and then change the label and then uh, print it in PDF and then officially issues. So what it means is it, it takes a lot longer time to change one bubbles or change one dimension. Um, in the conventional methods, the CAD file, um, even you have 10 reference, 20 reference, maybe it only takes you 30 seconds, one minute to open it. It's very quick. But then like in uh, BIM models, even with the data shortcut, it could take five, 10 minutes to open a model because the model itself contains all the design informations in it. Um, but then like when we change it, as um as in the model at the next phases whoever work on it they can see it immediately so um in the beam workflow it will take a day or so to create a dance sketch or this model that uh, uh, issue of this drawing so basically for the agent task it will still take times to work on it of course uh, there's room to improve because technology is improving. However, this we it, it, it will, we will need to explain to the site team where we have to explain to the front end staff why it takes so long. Because um, in a conventional way, maybe five, 10 years ago, we can just use uh, a paper and then just cross it out and then print it out and then let the site team or contractor to build it. But now with the BIM model, 
with, with a standard way, we have to change it in BIM, and then we have to check the clash if it's correct or not. We have to uh, print it in 2D and then make sure no clashes and then print um, the drawing out. So it takes a long longer than expected, but this way we could minimize the double handling or other mistake uh, interface with other people. And then another limitation is about when we pass our BIM model to the contractor. That's um, the contractor has to build it or carry forward that BIM model from our design level, which is our OD 300 to 400 or 500 or above. But then usually contractor may not be able to directly use our model. The reason is, when BIM itself nowadays um, is not does not take part of the contract document. What it means is um, the uh, revised BIM model may take longer to build. Why? Because our design model, when we put it, give it to contractor, contractor needs to review it, we have to check it if it's the same as our um drawings, our contract drawings, our tenter drawings, it potential lead to um, <clears throat> insufficient level of design and they require to rework of the model. Maybe it takes them longer to uh, rework on the model. So basically it's a lot easier to build it from zero. It's lack of trust owning the bill because it's not part of the contract document. So when it increased the level of detail, it, we, they have to source the product, they have to build the model again anyway. So does it really add value to the contractor? I think so. But then we, it will need time and trust and um, works how the design model could add values and then carry forward to the next um, level of details. And then in order to have a holistic understanding of the project, it also requires many data shortcuts. What it means is when there's a many data shortcut you want to reference in, oh, it will take even longer time to load and then to open the files. What it means is, <laughs> for example, uh, when we want to make some changes to the design, meanwhile, share with others, okay? Oh. Maybe today you are not in a good day and you make some mistake to the design. And then other people just look at it and then your mistake is there. It will just take longer time to correct it because whatever your mistake is actually inference to other design and other parties. Um, of course, um, every company has its own unique setup of quality assurance and modeling procedures. However, whoever new to the project, it requires some time to get used to it because in the conventional way, our draft design not usually show it to other people internally or externally. Um, it, meanwhile, however, with BIM, it is very easy to show at the beginning because the data shortcut has been set up at the beginning. You just need to reference it and then it just uh, show your design, no matter it's corrected or not, uh, with others. So it will take a steep learning curve and training for the parties, whoever use the BIM and whoever has a model. If the cost of training to the new members needs some inefficiency because some people pick it up quickly, some people are not, and the different design elements has different design needed. So the bigger issues, if they adopt the workflow and then delete the change and important elements, for example, the alignment was correct, or like the drainage design was correct and accidentally deleted, then it will take some time to go back to the server, get back the correct information, and then put it back to the live uh, BIM model. So this double handling will still need time and um, um, and then let other team member knows that, oh, sorry, I make a mistake. I will need to correct it. So this kind of work 
this collaborative work, we'll need to have a good understanding and a, a good workflow in order to make it more profitable and efficient. So as mentioned, uh, uh, Hong Kong has been used BIM for probably past 10 years. Um, there's some potential solutions and area of development, we can work on it. And then uh, it's not perfect, but then uh, we will have solutions to um, resolve it because bringing everybody in the same platform, um, using the same language to speak is a lot easier for to bring everyone on the same page and then make it more efficient and uh, more effective um, to build the infrastructures and whatever in our industry, it could add value to it. So what is the way forward um, to enhance the productivity of construction industry? Actually, our government has committed in promoting BIM in Hong Kong. Um, they actually date back to 2013. This was a proposal to increase BIM in public work endorsed by the government. Well, now, BIM does not take part of the contract document, but it's getting there. If you, if we look at the website, actually policy and measures has been rolled out to support the use of BIM in development projects, predominant in the government public work projects. Um, basically, this is the roadmap to show the adaptations of BIM in buildings plan preparations and submissions. This actually released in 2000, by the end of 2023, um, December, as actually outlined the key milestone of adaptations of BIM um, and utilize the goal and then put everybody on the same page. The roadmap is a step in the right decisions in adopting BIM as an official submissions document. With the more stringent quality audits and standards could be enforced, we can ensure BIM models has been constructed using the appropriate methods, allow the model to be used for further analysis without the need for future rework. And then uh, with more setting and the learning curve we have, so um, we hope BIM could be used and make it more um, useful and design it in a more um, effective way. Um, because at this moment, from the exp experience that we have so far, we are still in transitions by using the conventional method and the new method means BIM. Uh, for a lot of time, we have to use the drawings presented in 2D in PDF with a hard copy a lot of time, explain it to the front end workers or whoever work on the site team, uh, whatever they have to build it. Instead of using BIM model with the iPad, present it and show it what's going on. Um, and then, uh, for a larger scale, possibly in executive level to the upper management, we will still need to explain the conventional way with the BIM as on site. So hopefully this will um, can add value when more people using it, um, it could be beneficial for the whole industry. Actually BIM, uh, alongside, we also can talk about the early engagement with QS and uh, contractor engagement with the BIM requirement. Uh, because uh, QS itself, uh, we can extract the quantity from the BIM model. However, when we build a model, we, for example, in the right-hand side, uh, we just put a BIM, put a slab, just like one slab, one line going through projected. However, for QS purpose, they will need to um, separate into two elements because there's a column in between. So there's some rules, specific rules that QS will need to uh, put it in BIM uh, in advance in the setup such that they can do the measurement very quickly to prepare to PM you um, the um, quantity checklist. So um, this a lot of time is related to the construction sequence. And then BIM 
not built with those rules in mind. It's that actually built with the models. It, it, it just built it with the engineer, but QS or contractor, they have a different view on how the beam works. Like for example, like um, in the right hand side, you can see the external wall is like one wall, but then like um, in reality for QS, they will need to put it into different sections. So like they can understand uh, which, uh, length and which sections will put it in uh, one PMU quantity, another one is another, uh, put it in another price bracket. So basically it has a lot of manual we work and we construction for BIM for QS use. Can we do it better? Yes, we have room to do it better. It is important for the project execution plan should not be undermined. It should be discussed in the early stage, get different party involved at the beginning such that we can build the BIM in a more effective way and then it can include all the detailed informations and things such as, such as measurement requirement in it. So it can add more values to different party in our industry to have uh, used the time and um, uh, put the product in a more efficient and effective way. So what is the identifications of opportunity for expertise workflow? Wow, there's a lot of parties involved, like um, um, there's a contractor, stakeholders, everybody. So currently the distributions between draftsmen, technicians, engineer, designer are very segregated. So how are we going to build, put every, everyone into the same platform. So current workflow lead to both working fairly independent for and others. Basically, we aim to use BIM to put everybody in the same platform, explore the opportunity to link the design software and input directly to BIM. Like for example, um, some structural people said uh, ETABs could be like design it, put all the design elements, go for it, and then it could generate the Revit model uh, directly. But but there's still some bugs. It's not directly into the Revit. It could be a preliminary design, but I think from time to time, it could be better. It could link it to the design. It could have a better analysis instead of just a visualization or a special requirement. BIM is not just a 3D model. It contains a lot of information in it. It could use it. And then how are we use it correctly? So it will rely a lot more on the software company to further develop, to make it more user-friendly and less bug. Lastly, a uh, forward thinking mindset. BIM allow a joint work of architect, clients, builder, engineers, and other relevant uh, stakeholders to uh, occur within in a single intelligent and shared process. Um, it's like uh, open open to innovations because if we bring everybody in the same page, they, we all can see uh, that part of it's allow adaptations and continuous learning for us, for everyone, um, by using this tool such that we are we can have a better product or build uh, better infrastructures um, in a more effective and um, uh, conventional way. However, like actually we should be, should have an open minded. We look for new system, we have AI, we have a lot of um, digital tools like uh, internet of things, digital twins. But at the end of the day, um, it's going to change the way we work. Um, we have a digital revolutions. We need to think forward. We never look back. We make mistakes. We learn from our mistakes. And then, um, but this tour will benefit our future because um, I would like to uh, say thank you and appreciation to the younger generations because they are tech savvy. They um, learn very fast. They are very smart people in Hong Kong. Um, they learn very quickly when they start as a trainee. They use 3D world to do the design. So it's not just uh, 
a conventional 2D process, they cannot visualize the spectral uh, environment. They are very good in it. So I would like to uh, say thank you to the young generations and uh, BIM itself adds a lot of value to our industry. It is very difficult to learn um, to start with because the setting is difficult, but um, I still want to uh, appreciate that this tool actually benefits our day-to-day -day life um, and in our industry. So uh, thank you. So All right, uh, thank you very much, Wendy. Thank you for your presentation. So um, now we are going uh, into the Q&A section. Uh, before that, maybe I'll just start from, from myself first. Uh, I, I quite agree with you uh, about the uh, contract binding uh, for the BIM could be the next big thing uh, in the industry. Mm -hmm. So um, I think my first question is, uh, according um, to your slide, you mentioned that uh, during you, your guys building the CPO works, uh, you can you don't have a kind of the uh, Hong Kong standard for the checking mm. uh, of the rules. So mm -hmm. um, who sh who should think um, should be the one who technically to make those kind of the uh, template or standards? Ah, uh, um, I I I don't know the answer, but I can tell Autodesk is um, actually help U.S. government to build it. So I'm not sure um, if Autodesk will help other countries to do it. Um, mm -hmm. Like even, even like UK or Canada, they have their own standard. Um, mm -hmm. But sometimes they uh, use Ashto as a base. So mm -hmm. possibly that's why uh, Ashto is a, a good reference to it. But because uh, in US they use uh, miles and, and inches. So it's not yep. good for Hong Kong, we cannot use it. So I that's why I do not encourage our engineer in Hong Kong to use it. But um, yeah, I, I think Autodesk themselves is the best, per, the best company to be approached, but it takes time because um, there are a lot of country in the world using it. So, um, but, we still need to check. It's, uh, every every software has bug, has problems. Um, it's still we like engineer to check. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Because uh, I think we can see that uh, there's a lot of uh, standard and template, mm -hmm. uh, especially in Revit, but not in mm -hmm. the kind of the civil 3D or in yes. Rose, in the civil works or UU. They don't have much of the support or template on it, mm -hmm. especially in Hong Kong, right? Correct, correct, correct. So uh, my second question is, uh, from our experience uh, as a as a client, actually mm -hmm. uh, a lot of consultant or contractor tell us, uh, we don't have people who know civil really, or they, they have no capability at all to build mm. a, a UU or, or the civil works. Uh, mm. do, do your guys have the same problem to get uh, manpower with those knowledge? We train people. <laughs> <laughs> in house, yes, yeah. That's why I say thank you to all our team members because uh, they all learn from scratch. Um, we work together. Um, they help me. They help me to put the presentations together. Uh, without them, I I don't think I can do better. Um, they they all working uh, very good and learn it. Yes, learn yeah. in the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's right. not a popular, yeah. it's a very niche market. So uh, yes. what I mean is that I really appreciate them because uh, it's not um, a general uh, or common way to perform the design. Um, it's something new, but it's not that it, it's not invaluable. It is something very important um, to learn and um, to understand how it works. I agree. I think there's a there's a Q and A from Sunny. So um, we have a, a question from uh, Sunny Choi. So um, mm. uh, he said, uh, you mentioned that uh, the contract got the contractor find the beam models uh, of limited use for them as mm. a model and not a big they are not contractual contractual binding and because of lack of trust on the models. 
as you as you are an engineering working on a consultant firm, are you mm-hmm. willing to produce contractual building models for the downstream? And hurdle for well, you to do this? <laughs> it's a very tricky question, sir. Mm-hmm. Um, we we don't mind because uh we perform the design uh from BIM, uh, but a lot of time is a lot of last minute change and then uh for example i i think i hope a lot of audience understand even cat file has different layers and uh, uh, some of the working lines some of the working elements are not supposed to be uh on the files and we just submit it maybe presented in 2d is correct but then when when we use it when we open the cat file and open the bin models are not correct so uh uh, it will need some training and um, uh, how to submit it with uh, official documents um, and a good understanding and a standard guideline to bound it, how we are going to submit a correct BIM model or correct type of design. I think 2D, uh, we have a lot of standard to bound it. Uh, it's very specifically saying whatever level, whatever um, uh, drawings name, file names, conventions, I think BIM will still need some time to uh, make it or standardize it. I think the standard is very essen- essential mm. uh, from the client. If yes, they set correct. up a proper proper standard mm-hmm. or specification, it will be make a make an easier day for for those uh, consultants mm-hmm. or contractors. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, Sunny, Sunny, I have another uh, questions. Yeah, I think it's more like a, a comments, right, from uh, from from our members. So uh, one mm-hmm. of the uh, so one of the comments, Wendy, uh, for for us is that uh, for the question about the slab and the column qu- quantity. Normally, mm-hmm. the con- concrete strength uh, of the column mm-hmm. is higher than the slab. Mm-hmm. Thus, the conventional approach of uh, measuring the quantity of slab and column is in order. Having mm-hmm. said that, if the modeler if the modelers model the slab in one piece, uh, mm-hmm. as what your diagram has shown previously, uh, as the as it is in the normal modeling practices in the project too. So, mm-hmm. uh, I. Th- uh, the, the one of the member who raised this belief that the QS can handle it too. So QS are also willing to uh, collaborate with the designers. So I guess it's mm-hmm. more like a, a, a comments uh, to share with uh, with this Not group. T- yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I think this Not is t- a yeah. very, very common question about uh, what build first, which, which one is belongs to slab, which one is belongs to column. Mm-hmm. I think if the if the beam modeler, uh, that modeler itself have a long range how to interpret the drawings or about the design. I think he mm-hmm. will know it in a kind of common sense. But I, uh, from right. my experience, uh, not, not all of the beam modeler uh, come from the, the AEC industry. Maybe they come yes. from another, another industry that they don't have a kind of the sense. So I think mm-hmm. uh, in BIM, is kind of, we, we, have a, we need a kind of the uh, training for those new mm. uh, BIM, BIM modeler. They can understand what What's the meaning of those drawings? That's my mm-hmm. opinion. It, it could be, it could be, but uh, I think another way to handle the whole problem is, you know, we we have BIM users defined, right? Uh, yeah. From Development Bureau, yeah. from CIC. I think if the BIM users uh, is identified in a project in the very mm-hmm. early stage, for example, like drawing generations, right? What kind of drawings? Like for this case, mm-hmm. Wendy has uh, presented a lot of this uh, 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 runway drawings uh, that uh, that was done in Silver 3D. The aim was mm-hmm. to maintain these uh, Silver 3D models. Then, mm-hmm. then we'll know the whole project teams, all the project stakeholders will focus on you know keeping keeping alive models, right, and keeping all mm-hmm. the 2D uh, associated generated 2D drawings updated. So mm-hmm. if we know uh, a specific beam users, we should we should focus on that. If we know that the model is going to be uh, used for quantity extractions, then Maybe maybe we should really focus on that. You know, or we have another set of models just for that, right? But again, mm-hmm. uh, then that will become two models, right? And it will differ from uh, what we actually plan for a single source of truth, right? SSOT. So mm-hmm. I think there's many ways to handle it. Uh, uh, it's just brainstorming. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, again, like uh, the message is like uh, thank thank you for the comments and opinion. Uh, um, but the message is like we it is um easier to work and set it up correctly at 
the beginning rather than like we build a model in our own world or designer because that's not the purpose of BIM. The purpose of BIM is to use the same platform for all parties um, to make comment and use it and then make it more efficient and uh, expedite the process. So um, it is it, a lot easier to involve at the beginning to say it out. But uh, of course, there's many ways, uh, many different ways how to handle this. I, I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So uh, we have another question uh, from Lin. So um, for your client, uh, your experience in those projects you presented, uh, those mm -hmm. setting uh, setting the project's delivery standard is by from the client or from the consultant. Uh, telling the client uh, what does the project uh, they should do with uh, with the standard from your side or from the client, most of them, like I think. Uh, from my understanding is like uh, there's some standard BIM setting, but then we also have project execution plans, which is particular for um, individual projects uh, because each project has some specific elements or like specific level of details we have to uh, achieve. So uh, it's, I, I would say it's an interactive uh, um, process because uh, there's some standard at the beginning. I, for example, um, from government project, we started back to 2013, um, but then it's evolved. Like at the beginning, there's uh, some issues, like uh, that's why we have a later versions and then we just need to work together and then make the models better. Um, so it's the iterations, I would say. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Wendy, uh, I, have, uh, I have one mm -hmm. question. Uh, probably, yes, uh, probably, probably more in-depth questions. Uh, <laughs> so just imagine um, you, you talk about uh, mega projects, right? And you mm -hmm. mentioned about uh, managing all of these big models. Um, mm -hmm. So once, uh, once, let's say, for example, uh, the design consultants has already uh, finish out all the design, the DD stage, all the construction documentations are being uh, prepared, and, and it went, it, it all went out uh, for tenderings, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then the consultants start moving to the uh, construction administration stage, right? Helping the clients, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, to manage the projects, you know, to answer all the uh, site queries, stationing on site, so on. So that model ownership has already been transferred to the mm -hmm. contractors, right? So, mm -hmm. and, and the consultants, uh, for example, in this case, you're managing a, uh, a civil 3D model of the mm -hmm. uh, runway. And then there's mm -hmm. uh, more changes. Uh, uh, if there's any changes that needs to change it, you know, that goes out uh, 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 to, the, to the contractors and the contractor is following to update that big model, right? That's mm -hmm. the uh, that's a, a general practices that we, uh, we are experiencing in Hong Kong. So mm -hmm. again, and then the, uh, let's say the Hong Kong, uh, the Hong Kong contractors, once they update uh, the design, the sketches or design changes from, from your site, uh, you know, they, they, they will have to submit to you for review, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, is there any uh, a pushback for the consultants to use contractors model? That's my I question. think uh, uh, it's a very good question because we face the problems every day. Uh, the issues arise from BIM from designer does not take part of the contract document. I think yeah. if it takes part of the contract document, when the contractor update the model, when we review it, because like as a designer, we just provide technical support. So when we review it, we also take responsibility. But then like if we don't, we don't know how the contractor build it. So it's harder, it's harder. But But meanwhile, we also help contractor to review their design if they are using the correct, the latest information or not. Um, but I think this question is back to collaborations platform. Do we use BIM 360 and let them update it and share with others in the meantime? Like, I think there's a lot more contractual administrations issues here rather than just the design itself. Because for example, if contractor use BIM 360, update whatever the model, and then make a comment and ask us uh, designer to review it, we can make comments immediately. But then do we take responsibility to ensure their models are correctly in place? 
because it's not because it's contractor responsibility. We pass the model to them already. We can make comments to their design whenever they are updated. We but we still don't take the ultimate responsibility because contractor actually is working on it. So that's why I said at the end, there's more uh, con, um, uh, contractual yeah. issues rather than mm. them itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, so what I get um, is that more, you know, if you are in the in that role, assume, assuming that uh, you are in that role as a design consultant, you're more than welcome mm -hmm. to help to review it. But ultimately, uh, the contractors has to, has to take the uh, ultimate responsibilities and they, mm -hmm. because they are they are, they are obligated to be, to construct it right so, yeah and then yeah. we are obligated to make comments to it because we provide technical input yeah mm -hmm. yeah uh, obviously obviously that uh, uh yeah your your later statement uh is also a contractual requirement right the mm -hmm. the consultant has to make a a review of uh, uh of these uh contractor Correct. submissions Correct. so Correct. yeah I, I think that's a phenomenon uh, that we we are we are seeing in Hong Kong. Uh, I, I, mm -hmm. I I do uh, share uh, share the same same opinion. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then I think for um, a lot of projects that not belongs to government, we have to go through the building uh, statutory submissions. If those submissions will use BIM or like uh, electronic submissions, it will make our life a lot easier as well because it's from the same model. But of course, it will take time. Just like the world map that I presented, I think it will take time to take part of the official document for submissions. Um, that will make it a lot more wider use in the near future. Okay, so uh, we have one more question uh, from Ray Choi. So um, mm -hmm. he asked, uh, as a Atkins, uh, an international engineering firm, uh, do you provide the design models for for those um, for them to reuse during the construction life cycle? Consider there may be some of the uh, IP contained in the models. Uh, uh, I'm afraid I don't get the answer, the questions correctly. Um, does it mean when we um, make the create a model, we pass it to the contractor, and then like there's some um, access management code that we have to update it, or or I'm a little yeah. bit confused on the questions. Yeah, I, I think uh, what what Ray mean is um, uh, because mm -hmm. the design model is uh, developed uh, inside the Atkins, so then mm -hmm. maybe contain some of the uh, intellectual properties, maybe some of your copyright, uh, your the model or the um, the template you created by Atkins. So we will we will you still share this model to the contractor because some of the IP could be uh, belongs to Atkins. Ah, uh, I think good questions, but then whatever we submitted is bounded by the contract document. It's not like uh, we have to submit the design and then the electronic files like the CAD files or the model actually belongs to client. But like, I, I don't know what kind of intellectual property specifically means, um, but then whatever uh, electronics, intellectual property, uh, whatever we designed it, uh, it, a lot of time belongs to the client when we complete the design. So uh, I I don't quite understand like if we share means like share with other consultant or share with contractor or whatever. Um, but BIM itself actually has contained design information in it. So, um, where we submitted like some kind of design information would uh, contain in it. I agree what you say because uh, even mm -hmm. though uh, for Atkins working on this project, you you put mm -hmm. your effort and manpower in it, but still at the end of the day, it belongs to the client, no matter yes. the design or the drawings or the model. Exactly. Or whatever, right? Right. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So. Okay. I think, uh, do we have any more questions from from the floor, from the members? Not yet. The members? No. Okay, so. I think uh, we're doing good on time. Yeah, so if there's no any more questions, uh, that will be the end of our uh, uh, sharing sessions. So uh, again, thanks a lot, uh, Wendy and her teams for those uh, presentations and the uh, sharing information for us. It's very interesting to, to know, know more about uh, those kind of uh, civil ready UU and civil works are in the beam because I think not not much in in Hong Kong right. It's not very popular in Hong Kong. Yeah. Yes.
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank um, you very much. Well, as I, as yeah. mentioned, there's still a niche market for us, and I hope this could be widely used uh, in Hong Kong and add exactly. value to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing. Okay. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I thank you all the members and non-members uh, for, for joining these sessions. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you thank all you. again. See you all thank again. you. Bye-bye.